Welcome to the Persecution Report. I'm Greg Musselman. Coming up, another Iraqi Christian is killed. Also, hundreds of Christians are arrested in Iran. And later, the challenges of spreading the gospel in a war zone. The Lord has given us peace in the middle of all this. And whatever side comes into our house, the Lord gives us the words to say to them and ways to reach out to them. We'll travel to the jungles of Colombia and meet a family who are bringing the message of peace to a violent part of the world, later on The Persecution Report. A 29-year-old Christian man was recently tortured and killed by members of Al-Qaeda in Kirkuk, Iraq. Asher Isa Yaqub was kidnapped, then his captors reportedly demanded $100,000 for his release. Three days later, his body was recovered, bearing marks of brutal torture. According to a local pastor, his kidnappers had reportedly pressured Asher's employer to fire him because he was Christian. He went on to say, because the contractor was rich and they couldn't do anything to him, they kidnapped Asher and unfortunately they killed him. Asher leaves to mourn a wife and three children. With the volatile situation and continuing violence, Christians in Iraq are increasingly fearful of violence directed at them by militant Islamic groups active in the country. Thousands are reportedly have fled to neighboring countries. 285 believers in 35 cities were arrested over a six-month period this year in the Islamic Republic of Iran. Many spent weeks and even months in prison and often serving long stretches in solitary confinement. They also endured interrogation and psychological abuse. David Yiknazer of Elam Ministries, an organization that serves Christians in Iran, was asked what crime these Christians are accused of committing. Well, actually, they are not officially accused of anything. Uh, they haven't been given official uh, charges at all. They have kept in prison sometimes for months at a time. And David, uh, we know that when Ahmadinejad came to power in 2005, he said that he will stamp out Christianity uh, in, in Iran. So uh, this has been an ongoing thing ever since he came to power. Why now, though, is it intensifying, do you think? Well, yes, it has been intensifying in the last few years, and in particular of the last year, it has uh, been very, it is, this persecution has gained momentum. And I think that's really because the church is growing with increasing momentum, and the, the government officials uh, are publicly stating that again now for the first time over all these years, they've never really acknowledged that Iranians are becoming Christians, uh, but for the first time they're saying this publicly. They're writing about it in the newspapers. They're warning people. They've stated um, publicly that they will arrest people who are uh, becoming Christians, that they will uh, close down networks of house churches. And uh, this is the result is that uh, hundreds of Christians have been arrested, have been interrogated. Their lives have been turned upside down. These believers often endure hours of interrogation. Some have suffered sleep deprivation and other kinds of abuse that tries to weaken them and cause them to deny their Christian faith. However, these believers in Christ are standing firm. Several Christians came under attack in Jaharkun State Indian recent weeks. Hindu militants beat members of five Christian families in Palamu District. A week prior, a group of Hindu militants threatened to beat Pastor Sanjay Chandri of Gospel Echoing Missionary Society if he did not stop leading worship meetings. He and his congregation then filed a complaint, leading police to visit with them the same day. Immediately after the police left, the enraged militants appeared and started beating people. One woman suffered internal injuries. Another believer was still missing at last report. The Christians have reportedly fled their homes. In a similar incident, Hindu militants in Karavati village are threatening to severely beat three families of new Christians if they did not return to Hinduism. <laughs> Colombian Christians are on high alert as intense and deadly violence continues in the country. A bomb exploded in Puerto Rieras, killing several policemen and injuring bystanders. For several months, members of Colombia's main Marxist rebel group, the Revolutionary Armed Forces of Colombia, also known as FARC, have been openly killing individuals in town streets and burning buses throughout the region. FARC guerrillas have also been conducting an internal purge, reportedly killing many of their own men, accusing them of being traitors to the communist cause. It's suspected that many of those killed were secret Christians. In all our years in Colombia, we have never seen it this unstable, said a voice of the martyrs contact, yet we believe this is the most opportune time that we have seen for the gospel. 
Even though it's very dangerous to spread the gospel in the jungles of Colombia, as you just heard, there are many who have counted the cost and are putting their lives on the line to see others come to Christ. In this next report, a VOM team traveled to the South American country to meet a mother and her teenage children who are serving Jesus in a war zone. Gabriela and her children, 15-year-old Bella and 17-year-old Juan, not their real names, rely on the Lord's protection to keep them safe. They live deep in the jungles of Colombia, where Marxist FARC guerrillas, paramilitary, drug traffickers and government soldiers are active. This is an extremely violent area. Gabriella has compassion for all these groups because she knows what it's like to live in fear and darkness. In 2006, her life had fallen apart. Gabriella says she became depressed after being spiritually abused. We were told we weren't being prospered because we weren't tithing the money from the coca fields. Others said we had problems because we ate pork and worshipped on Sunday. Others told us that women can only be saved through childbearing. Another time, some high-powered preachers came in and had a big campaign, and there was a wrong spirit, and that's what got into me. I ended up in an insane asylum that was run by Catholics, and they told me my problem was because I didn't pray the rosary enough and didn't have a patron saint. Gabriela left the insane asylum and made her way back to the jungle to her husband and children. Although she can't exactly remember how she did that, she was very confused. I was in very bad shape. There was something driving me. It was trying to tear me apart. There was a spirit trying to get me to pick up a knife and kill my two children and I was fighting against that. Gabriella never felt the Lord had abandoned her, but she was desperate and dangerous. Entirely unsure of what to do, soon her life would be dramatically changed. Russell Stendhal of Columbia Petit Cristo gave her several Galcom solar-powered radios, which were preset to a Christian radio station. She began listening to the biblical teaching, studied the scriptures for herself, read Christian books, and received encouragement from Russell and others. Through the Lord's powerful work in her life, Gabriella became a committed follower of Jesus and was a changed woman. My whole outlook on life changed. I really began to love my children, and I realized I hadn't really loved them. Asked about his mother's transformation, Gabriela's son Juan became very emotional. His sister Bella also began to cry. It was painful recalling the violent and erratic behavior of their mother. After our team prayed for the family, Juan told us that he is grateful for what the Lord has done in his mother's life. He too has committed himself fully to the ministry and is now involved in reaching the guerrillas and others in the area with the gospel. Juan and Bella work with Rolo and others to distribute radios, Christian books, Bibles, and clothing to all sides of the conflict. We are motivated by the guerrillas and the army soldiers because they are desperately seeking for the truth, and they want these radios, and they want help, and are reaching out to us, and that is what motivates us. When I find young people, especially the girls that don't have clothes or their clothes are in tatters, then I get something ready and I take it to them. I scout around and see where the needs are. We also give them radios and books. After seeing the Lord work a miracle in the life of their mother, Juan and Bella say they will continue to serve Jesus no matter what the cost or danger. They want to see others set free from their spiritual darkness. We see a lot of young people either joining the guerrillas, paramilitary, going into the army. A lot of young people go into the city and join drug gangs. As long as they do this, there is going to be a lot of violence, 
and we are not going to do that. What they will do is pray for them and reach out to them with God's love. Bella is determined to live a godly life and wants to be an example to other young people. However, her life is not without challenges and difficulty. One day we were going to another town on our motorcycle and we were going around the corner and there were two soldiers with guns and they treated us very badly. We have a lot of fear of the paramilitary forces because unlike the guerrillas who say, if you keep doing this, we will kill you, at least they give us a warning. But the paramilitary won't. They just start killing people. So when they come, people flee to the jungle. Gabriela and her family live on the edge of a FARC-controlled area. To the south of their house, there are no churches. The guerrillas won't allow them. The Lord has given us peace in the middle of all this. And whatever side comes into our house, the Lord gives us the words to say to them and ways to reach out to them. And they always say they sense the Spirit of the Lord and say there is something remarkable here. I started sharing with the guerrillas the messages I heard on the radio. And when they found out I had some radios, they asked if I would give each one of them a radio. Along with Bibles and Christian books, Gabriella provides clothing and radios to the guerrillas who defect. The guerrillas returned one day to see if I had any more radios. Their radios had been destroyed and lost when the government bombed them. They said the radios were the most important thing to them. Gabriella says she's not afraid to continue her ministry because she is seeing amazing results. The guerrillas and the guerrilla sympathizers come and pick up radios and Bibles and go back out there and study the Bible and listen to the radio. Gabriella says some of the guerrilla commanders have come to Christ. Two of them called Gabriella just a few days before our visit with her. They said they loved me very much and to pray for them. The message of the Prince of Peace through these faithful followers of Jesus is making a huge difference in this violent country, one life at a time. What an amazing family. They're so committed to seeing others set free from the violence and experience true freedom in Jesus Christ. Please pray for Gabriella and her family and the brave believers who are working in the jungles of Colombia. And also pray for the persecuted church in India, Iran, Iraq, and around the world. Remember, when one part of the body suffers, we all suffer. Thanks for watching the Persecution Report. Goodbye and God bless. For more information on the ministry of the Voice of the Martyrs and ways in which you can help the persecuted church, please visit our website at persecution.net. That's persecution.net.